Hi guys, it's Kate from Cater, and I am out here in the garden this afternoon. <clears throat> it's a Saturday, and I'm just enjoying a really quiet day. It's very, very hot. I spent the morning inside making a batch of canna salve, which is a topical ointment salve, uh, a medicinal salve that I make that is really popular. Uh, it's kind of like a medicinal arnica, and it's just really great for you know, joint pain, muscle pain, general healing. Um, so I was all out. So I spent the day indoors doing that. Then I came out, <clears throat> watered everything, took the turtle outside, now I'm just kind of relaxing, uh, enjoying the, the late afternoon and it is starting to cool down a little bit. So sitting here looking at my garden and I really wanted to shoot this video to explain to you my transition to organic gardening this year. And I know I've talked about it in several of my videos, but I haven't really gone into depth about how I made this transition and what exactly I'm doing. So I think that Organic gardening has always been something that I have aspired to. I mean, you know, having something that doesn't have uh, synthetic food in it obviously seems ideal. Um, as I moved more and more towards this interest, I started looking at organic lines of food products that I could purchase to substitute kind of the more general purpose foods that I was using. and. The last line of food that I bought, which was a Remo Nutrients line, um, which was great, but it cost me $150 for, for that batch of food, and it gets quite expensive. Uh, so that's a bit of an obstacle, you know, for somebody. And then it's not really congruent with this idea of sustainability when I always have to outsource for my food. So. A couple of years ago, I started volunteering at the food bank, and in my local food bank, there is an aquaponics farm um, where we grow greens uh, and we raise fish for the food bank. And so it's a really great initiative, and I started volunteering there, and I volunteered there for a couple of years, and I learned a ton about aquaponics. And aquaponics, and at the food bank, it's really a closed water system where you know, we have fish that we feed and they and that's where we kind of put the food in. They poop, it goes through the system, it feeds the plants, which filter the water and then go back to the fish and the cycle continues. It's very closed system. Uh, and so again, the food we're putting in is really on the front end with the fish. Now, um, what I learned through my aquaponics experience is that what is necessary for this ecosystem and this process to take place is beneficial bacteria. And really, we need beneficial bacteria to break down the waste from the fish in order for the plants to be able to access it. So when you first set up an aquaponic system, unless you're adding an amendment at that point of beneficial bacteria, much like a new aquarium, you have to leave it a few months for that beneficial bacteria, that nitrate cycle to be established before it really is gonna start um, working and, and growing food. So this led me to kind of talk to my son about potentially getting an aquarium. I was getting a little bit more interested in this idea of using fish water for my plants. So I ended up starting to take home, every week I would go into volunteer and I would just bring home a jug of the water from the system and I would feed it to my plants. And they were doing really well, I liked it a lot. So every week I'd bring home you know, a couple of four liter jugs and feed my house plants. So ultimately I ended up adopting a turtle and I talked about um, how uh, that happened in another video. I was looking for uh, actually an aquarium for my carnivorous plants to, to make a terrarium out of. I ended up having a turtle and I thought, wow, this is a great opportunity to have my own supply of tank water at home. I don't have to cart it home from the food bank. So, um, so I started using it in my garden. So once a week I do a water change and I all of the water that I take out of my turtle tank, I then 
use to water my plants. So once a week, they're getting a nice, um, a nice watering with this go away wasp. Ah, sorry. Ah, with this turtle water, man, it's that time of year. Never swat at yellow and black things. That's the thing. But I have a lemonade here, and that's what it's going for. So I'm just going to cover that up. Never swat at yellow and black things because they will remember you and they will hunt you. Okay, so back to my turtle story and it can just buzz around my lemonade there. Um, so my garden's been doing really well. I started adding worm poop, which I had a batch of from years ago. It was given to me and I started using rabbit poop, which I was buying off of Kijiji. Subsequently, I adopted a rabbit because it made more sense to just have this beautiful furry pet instead of paying you know, $25 a bag for rabbit poop. So my garden's been doing really well and I'd like to shoot an entire video just on the differences that I've noticed using only organic food this year because there have been a lot of differences and, and I, I'm finding it really interesting. This is a, this is a first time for me. Um, so I've been thinking about organic gardening and how it works and this idea of living soil and how it's really not enough just to add um, you know manure or, or rabbit poop to dirt because that food like the fish poop isn't accessible to your plants ah, until we have beneficial bacteria to break it down. So a lot of times I've seen when people are organic gardening, they will take dirt and they'll add amendments and then they will kind of um, like steep it like a tea, leave it a few months in some warm place. I'm just gonna come over here because this is bothering me. Um, in some warm place, they'll let it steep and that bacteria is gonna grow and then their soil is gonna become alive and that's how they create their living soil. But with the aquaculture, the beneficial bacteria is in the water. So because I'm taking water from the tank, we have that nitrate cycle already established, the beneficial bacteria is in the water. So when I add my rabbit poop or my worm poop, and worm poop is a little bit different, um, but I won't get into that, uh, but I'm adding that bacteria to keep my soil alive without having to go through this process of steeping it and all that stuff. So, um, so I think really that's the key to this organic system that I'm dealing with because I am adding different kinds of manure from different plants, you know, worms, rabbits, and turtles, but it is that turtle tank water that's giving me the beneficial bacteria that is allowing the plants to really access the food. So um, I hope that makes sense. I just wanted to talk a little bit about how I came into this. I never really talked about my aquaponics background at the food bank. And um, also many of you probably don't know it. I do post about it on my Instagram, but again, um, just some things I've been thinking about in the garden this year as I'm watching it grow in this whole other, other manner. Um, my system is kind of closed but not so much as an aquaponic system. So in an aquaponic system, there's no soil. So it's almost like aquaponics, aquaculture, and soil-based gardening. In an aquaponic system, actually, soil is the enemy because it can carry E. coli and different um, harmful bacteria that can then you know, go back to the fish and then we're gonna have a real problem. So in the aquaponics farm, we're really careful about having no soil in the farm at all because we don't want that contamination. Now back here, obviously I'm soil based, but I'm using these principles of organic gardening and aquaponics in a soil based system. And as I think about it, I know that other people are doing this because I meet other hobbyists online through my, you know, aquatic interests, my, my aquatic plants that I grow and, and different things. And I know that people are using their tank water in their gardens, but I really don't see a lot of it um, on YouTube or in other content from other gardeners. So I do kind of think it's a unique way to kind of marry those principles 
of aquaculture and aquaponics in a soil-based system. Now, again, I'm not as closed. In the aquaponic system, we don't really add a lot of water. It's constantly recirculated. We get a little bit of evapor evaporation or a little bit of loss when we flush the tanks. But other than that, it's fairly closed. Now, my system isn't closed like that because I am always adding fresh water to it. So when I clean my turtle tank, I'm refilling it with fresh water. But then what's happening is that water is then steeping in my turtle tank. Um, getting that beneficial bacteria that then I take out after a week, I put more fresh water in that's gonna sit for another week. So I am always adding, I would say about right now, my, my water changes are anywhere from 35 to 50 gallons a week because I have upgraded to a 140 gallon tank and I should shoot a video of the new tank that I got the turtle uh, at some point. So it's a fair amount of water, 35 to 50 gallons, but at the end of the day, it's a lot more gratifying than just mixing up a bunch of food to feed my plants because not only are my plants getting organic food and I can feel really good about that once a week, my turtle's also getting a clean tank and that makes her happy and me happy. And uh, yeah, so that kind of sense of a closed, a more closed system has been really fun. Um, so I think that's all I wanted to say about this. I'm kind of shooting this off the cuff. Uh, I was just sitting back here and I knew I had this content stewing around in my head that I just kind of wanted to share. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any comments, let me know. If you are doing this to any degree, let me know. I would be really interested to share experiences. So, um, I do have a bunch more stuff that I want to talk about. I've had a lot of content going around in my head, so you can rest assured that I'll be back soon. But until next time, happy, healthy growing. Uh, you know that I am Kate from Cater, and I will see you later.